Hi there, this is my uh, very first uh, video here, and um, I'm going to do some uh, movie reviews. Hopefully, I'll, uh, this is my first one, hopefully I'll do some more. I've been uh, inspired by a couple of guys that I uh, watch on YouTube, um, and uh, I figured I'd give it a go. So, I um, wanted to uh, review uh, two movies. First off, one is um, a great movie, probably the uh, one of the best movies of all time, in uh, my opinion. And um, I had to watch it uh, for the first time when I was in a contemporary literature class in high school. It was my junior year, and um, since then it's been uh, probably my favorite movie. Um, I don't watch it. I used to watch it all the time. I don't. Want, I probably haven't given given it a good watching. You know long time um, but it's uh, definitely one of my favorites um, got some good uh, themes in it uh, symbolism as well and um, and the movie is Cool Hand Luke you can see here it's a very old DVD and um, it stars uh, Paul Newman the late great Paul Newman um, basically tells the story of uh, a guy named um, Lucas Jackson who's uh, uh, one drunken night he gets uh, arrested for uh, taking the heads off of uh, parking meters and um, he's sent to prison in Florida I believe and um, he's like the ultimate nonconformist um, which is uh, very uh, reminiscent of uh, Holden Caulfield and Catcher in the Rye. Um, and uh, tries to escape a couple of times and they uh, put him in the hole, I think that's what they call it. And um, anyways, there's some pretty good uh, bits of dialogue in this movie. Uh, one of the famous lines is, uh, what we have here is a failure to communicate, um, which is, uh, if you haven't heard it before, it's probably one of the, one of the more um, quoted lines in uh, modern movies, films, or what have you, um, which is a, you know, Probably that, and I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. It's another one, and um, so it's a good, it's a good flick. Um, I need to get give it another good watching. Like I said, this is my first movie, and I kind of just going into this uh, blind. But I figured I'd give it a go, so I want to see how it goes without any type of uh, <laughs> format or pre pre preparation. So. But it's a good movie. I've seen it a lot of times. I need, like I said, I need, to get, yeah, I need to give another good watching because it's a great one. It came out in 1967, November 1st, 1967. Um, it's got George Kennedy in it, who's great. Um, it's based on a book by a guy named Don Pierce, I believe. Maybe it's a screen, just a screenplay. Um, Yeah, I think it's a, actually, it was a book. I should, probably should have looked that up. Um, let's see. Let's see who else is in it. Yeah, it's Paul Newman. It's Lucas Jackson. George Kennedy is Dragline. Uh, Joe Van Fleet is uh, Luke's mother. There's a scene in there where uh, he goes to see his mother. And she's uh, kind of at the end of the road there. And kind of an... <laughs> Interesting uh, little scene there. Um, it's got Struther Martin as the captain. And um, Dennis Hopper's actually in it too. Uh, Robert Drevis. Uh, Richard Davalos plays Blind Dick. And uh, Joe Don Baker's in it too, actually. Um, and Harry Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton's in it too. So, 
it's a good it's a good one. Um, definitely recommend this one if you have not seen it. It's a classic, definitely a classic. So, and then th this is probably the best movie in my opinion of all time. Yeah, the best best movie. Um, grade A movie, <laughs> A plus. I think it's got like a hundred percent rating on uh, Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. So it's got to be good if Rotten Tomatoes is as good. It's got to be good, you know. And then I don't know if they have a Blu-ray of this, but I gotta get a Blu-ray of that. So this is so old. I mean, you can see you can see here how old this thing is. It's got these this type of case. So. This is the DVD. It was, probably got this at the when the when the DVDs were the dawn of the DVD era. This has got to be like I don't know, 14, 15 years old. Who knows? And then, <laughs> with every good grade A movie, you know, 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever, you you know. Word of mouth, you know, or classic, you know, movies, cinema, films, whatever you want to call it, you know, just standing the test of time. There's always got to be a B movie, or in this case, probably like an F movie, because this is just like such a terrible movie, but it's so great at the same time. It's just so ridiculous. And uh, I'm a musician, so, and, uh, I just this movie is just like out of this world. It's so crazy and stupid. I mean, you have to just see it if you can get yourself a copy of it, or look some. There's the clips on YouTube actually, which are just hilarious. If you're into music at all, especially like heavy metal music or hard rock music or whatever, you just got to see this movie. It's so cheesy, it's just like terrible, but it's so good. It's so great. Um, it's called Rock and Roll Nightmare. It came out actually in 1987. If you can see there, there's a reflection. Twenty years after, <laughs> cool hand, I, cool hand Luke. I can't even. I it's, it's, as I'm doing this, it's, I can't even believe I'm doing these two movies in the same uh, review. But it's just so terrible. But it's good, you know. It's basically a Canadian movie. It's about these Canadians who. Uh, it's they're like in a rock band called uh, uh, Tritons, like T R. I T O N Z or something like that, and there's this guy named John Michael Thor who's the who who was like written. He's like it was written by him and produced by him, and he uh, he's like I guess he's like a big he's like a bodybuilder in Canada, like fame. I don't know if he's famous or what, but apparently there's a following for him, and. Um, He's a rock, rock musician, and uh, basically this tells the story of uh, him and his band. It's I don't think it's his real band, but it's I, I, I don't think I know it's not his real band. Uh, they they go up to a house in Canada somewhere, like to retreat and record music or something like that, and it's just shot like. Like a B movie, it's like uh, it's like it, it reminds me of like Evil Dead, but like Evil Dead's like a good B movie, and this is like a bad B movie. It's like a C movie, D E and F movie, um, but it's like not good. I mean, Evil Dead's good, you know. This is terrible, but it's entertaining and it's funny. It's like it's not funny on purpose, but you there's so much, so much, so many classic uh, lines in it that are just so funny it's so bad I can't stress how bad it is and then by way of it being so bad it's good it's funny so it's not it's not a comedy I know that I mean this guy probably takes himself really seriously uh, the music when they're playing music is like the best parts in the movie I mean it's just like actually the, the music is actually um, the, the like the uh, instrumentation of it it's like a really good it's like a really good song I mean if you like heavy metal I mean there's some pretty good like hard rock, heavy metal songs. I mean, it's like, 
very telling of its time. It's like 87. So, I mean, it's like, you know, there's even a, kind of a, one song that's kind of got like an Iron Maiden type of riff, and it. it's actually pretty good. But the lyrics are like terrible, too. Uh, I mean, the guy says like one, one song, um, it's called Ener Energy. They play, it's called Energy. And, uh, I mean, the guy starts it off, the count, he starts it off, he's like, he's even cheesy counting the song off, so, um, but Energy, it's got, I mean, he's a rock star, you know, and they're up in this, you know, house, cabin, or whatever, and they're, you know, having, you know, that sex, drugs, and rock and roll, minus the drugs, I mean, the guy's, like, drinking, like, Coca-Cola or something like that, in it. um, but he says, like, he has the song Energy, and he says, like, the most, uh, on rock and roll line that I've ever heard in my whole life. He says, I set my goals and I pace myself. So, yeah. I mean, that's not like a rock and roll line at all. I mean, man, this guy's supposed to be a, a rock and roll guy and he says that line. It's just, it just it basically sums this movie up in a, in a nutshell. I mean, it's very <laughs> reflective of the movie. And, uh, basically, uh, there's, there's something going on in this house and, uh, you know, if you see like a like a demonic child, and they see all these, so you know something. That, there's something going on in there. It's haunted, but I mean, it's it's kind of like Evil Dead, but terrible. And then there's a scene where like I think the, the drummer and some, his girlfriend go out by like a, in like a pond or something like that, and she turns into a demon, and then. It, it basically it's not doesn't make any sense and at the end uh, there's a big stand up between John Michael Thor and like the devil and um, I don't know it's kind of like I don't know if it's like a dream he has or whatever if he was dreaming it up but, but I don't know it, it just doesn't make any sense um, but I would definitely recommend seeing it I know it's probably you don't want to see it now but <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta see it if you want to see a really bad movie and, uh, so, but, other than that, that's about it, uh, it was, yeah, it came out in 87, it's 83 minutes long, if you want to waste 83 minutes of your life, um, that's definitely a good movie to waste 83 minutes of your life to, uh, it was directed by John Fasano, I don't know who the hell that is, but, um, uh, it was produced by jean michel Thor, written by him, starring him, um, and I got this movie it's a special edition so it's got a slip case that's what it looks like so here's a DVD if you can take a look at that I mean there you go that's him and this is this is his band there's, there's Thor right there his guitar player this is his drummer. He, this guy has like an ac uh, English accent in the movie, a uh, British accent in the movie, but he drops it like uh, into the movie. It probably happened on purpose. I mean, they make money of it in the movie. I'm sure it happened on purpose, it, and then he couldn't probably hold a British accent, so they just kind of incorporated it into the plot, I'm sure. There's this bass player guy and his girlfriend. There's like nudity and stuff in it, too, so if, if you want to see some naked 80s women. I mean, I guess that's good, so. Anyhow, I promise the next couple of videos will probably be better because that was probably, a, didn't give you much, but I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. So, anyhow, hope you take a look at it, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free if you want to praise me or chastise me. Uh, go ahead. So, Anyhow, um, thanks for watching, and uh, more to come.